welcome to second lecture on appropriate analysis for frames subjected to lateral load in this method we are going to see the cantilever method and an example on that so in cantilever method what we do is we consider the entire vertical frame entire frame as a single vertical cantilever and it is to be noted that the cantilever method is specifically suitable only for tall frames which are having lesser number of peaks okay the first assumption is same from the previous method which is portal frame wherein we assume that point of contrafracture in all the members lies at the midpoints point of point of contrafractures are nothing but point of zero bending moment we can consider these as to be a hinges the second assumption is basically from the beam theorem bending theorem so it says says that in any story the direct stress in the column is directly proportional to their distance from the centroidal vertical axis of the frame this is quite obvious when a cantilever bends there will be neutral axis or beam axis and the, all the fibers above the neutral axis will be having tensile forces and all those below the neutral axis will be having compressive stresses and as you can see from the diagram stress diagram given at the bottom as the distance increases the stress also increases okay let's see an example here here we have a two story three bay frame so this is just an illustration okay so what we does here is basically the entire frame is converted into a single cantilever beam which is vertical fixed at the bottom throughout and it is subjected to the same loading p1 and p2 horizontally so what happens is this this entire cantilever is having a neutral axis and all those instead of here when we convert that to a beam this frame to a beam in beam we had a fibers but in a frame instead of fibers we have the columns okay so the fibers are replaced by columns that's only the difference okay so the first thing to be done is you have to locate the centroidal axis of the frame let's say that centroidal axis is at a distance of y bar from the first column and each of the column is having area a1 a2 a3 and a4 and each of them are at a distance a2 is at a distance d2 second column is at a distance d2 from first column third is at a distance of d3 from first column and fourth is at a distance of d4 from the first column so in that case we can use the centroidal formula to find out the centroidal axis which is a1 into 0 plus a2 into d2 plus a3 into d3 plus a3 a4 and d4 all divided by a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 okay okay so once you once you locate the neutral axis we can apply the beam theorem so it is to be noted that those columns which are to the left of this are having tensile stresses which means that in those we will having will be having tensile forces okay so let's mark now the column axial forces as for the top story we will use v1 v2 v3 and v4 it is to be noted that the columns on the left hand side are having tensile forces hence we mark the forces downward v1 and v2 is marked downward and columns on the right hand side which are compressive columns are having forces acting upward v3 and v4 so downward not denotes tensile and upward denotes compressive here okay now that we know the bending moment equation which is m by a equal to sigma by y equal to e by r so from that we can find that sigma is equal to m by i into y that is sigma is proportional to y okay so but it is to be noted that for a given height the moment is same and also the moment of inertia is also same so m by a is a constant so in that case i can say that sigma 1 by y1 equal to sigma 2 by y2 equal to sigma 3 by y3 equal to sigma 4 by y4 okay so the stress can be replaced as force by dividing the by replacing stress as force by area so v1 is the force in the column and area is the area of cross section of the first column a1 okay so we can we can take equation v1 by a1 by y1 equal to v2 by a2 by y2 and go on 
so this is a first query this means that v2 v3 and v4 can be written in terms of v1 the second equation if you take the moment about b we already told b is a center point which is a contraflexure point moment is zero over b so the moment that b will be zero so considering all the forces we have t1 into s2 which is a clockwise moment this has to be equal to v3 into m3 which is anti clock which is a clockwise moment again so we have a minus sign v1 into m1 which is anti clockwise v2 into m2 which is again anti clockwise so taking the moment about b to be 0 we have this equation so now what we have is two equations in terms of v1 v2 and v3 so once there are we can substitute v2 and v3 in terms of v1 we get the value of v1 once we get the value of v1 we can find out v2 v3 and v4 okay it is also important to note that p1 the total horizontal force in the first story or the top story should be equal to the sum of force h1 h2 and h3 and h4 which is the horizontal shear on the column at the top story okay now let's see an example the similar example as we seen in the portal frame method so it is important to note that here all the columns are having same area of cross section okay so once you have the problem the first thing you have to do is you have to locate the neutral axis okay so let's say the neutral axis is a distance of y bar from the first column and you can find out the location of neutral axis okay so here is the equation y bar is equal to a1 into 0 plus a2 into y1 plus a2 a3 into y2 y3 plus a4 into y4 here all areas are same there is no problem here. so we located a2 y bar is 8.25 so mark the axis centroidal axis and mark the distance to each of the uh, columns so 8.25 to first column 1.25 to the second column 2.25 to the third and 7.725 to 7.25 to the last column okay now that we got the central axis it is obvious that the first and second column are tensile columns and third and fourth columns are compressive columns so we can write the first equation as v1 by a1 all divided by y1 which is 8.25 v2 by a2 divided by 1.25 equal to v3 by a3 divided by 2.25 v4 by a4 divided by 7.5 here a1 a2 a3 and a4 are all are same it is a so it cancels out so we have this equation from this equation we can write v2 as 1.25 and v1 by 8.25 similarly we can replace v3 and v4 with v1 equation okay so once we have done that we have expression for v2 v3 and v4 okay and the next thing we are going to take is take the moment about the Point of contraflexure in the last column. So here we have P1 into H by 2, which is clockwise, should be equal to V1 into M1 minus V2 into M2, sorry, plus V1 V2 into M2 minus V3 into M3. Okay, so if you substitute that and replace V2 and V3 in terms of V1, we have an expression for V1 and if you once is and again we substitute to find out v2 v3 and v4 okay so it is to be noted that v1 and v2 are axial forces in the first and second column both are tensile and v3 and v4 are axial forces in the third and fourth column both are compressive so if we add two tensile forces and two compressive forces both should be zero so both should be equal hence the total force will be equal to zero The same thing can be carried out for the bottom story also here also we can consider either you can consider this instead of v1 you can consider this as u1 u2 u3 and u4 and h also can be replaced with some other term okay so here also the theorem is same like first equation remains the same relations between v1 v2 v3 and v4 remains the same however when we take the moment we take the moment about this
this point which is the point of contour flexor in the last column at the bottom bottom story okay so when we do that we have moment due to two external forces which is 180 and 120 so 120 into 3.5 plus 3.5 by 2 plus 180 into 3.5 by 2 is equal to v1 into 7 plus 3.5 plus 5 plus v2 into 3.5 plus 5 minus v3 into 5 so we can substitute for v2 and v3 in terms of v1 and finally find once we get v1 we can find out v2 v3 in the scope here also if you add up v1 and v2 you get a total tensile force if you add v3 and v4 you get a total compressive force the total tensile is also is going to be equal to total compressive okay so hence the total vertical shear in each column or axial forces in each column is going to be zero now that we got all the vertical shears it is now time to find out the d moments and column moment okay so as we did in the previous pro portal problem we will take each joint and analyze so each joint will be cut out at the point of contour flexure so when we take the top left column joint a what we already have is that there is a vertical shear acting downward v1 which was 13.615 okay if there was a 13.615 acting downward the shear force in the beam ab is going to be again 13.615 acting upward okay now that if we got 13.615 kN acting at a distance of 3.5 meters we can find out what is this moment it is going to be an anti clockwise moment of value 13.615 into 3.5 so that we got the value of 47.652 now to consider the this joint the total moment at this joint should be zero so in order to make that to be zero we have to add a clockwise moment which is having the equal value as 47.652 so this is going to be the moment on the column so we have a column moment of 47.652 in the first column okay now that if you have a moment of 47.652 in the column at a at a distance and there is a force which is horizontal shear on the column can be found out as 47.652 divided by 1.75 so this is going to be 27.3 now you got the column moments and beam moment as well as the horizontal shear on the first column this analysis can be carried out to the all each and every joint and you can find out all the column moments as well as all the mem all the beam moment and also the horizontal shear it is to be noted that for the first story all the horizontal shears will sum up to 120 so now let's move on to the second column we are depicting the entire thing i'll explain you the second joint also b here so now that we got the vertical shear in the column sorry beam ab was 13.615 which means that this is a contraplexure point and so on the right side also there is a similar equal and opposite shear acting downward so this is 13.615 acting downward there is a axial force of 2.0263 acting downward which is nothing but this is nothing but v2 so both these are known to us so which means that there is a total of 15.67 8 which is acting down which means that this force which is acting upward has to be 15.678 okay now that we have the shears we can find out what is this moment values okay so 13.615 acting at a distance of 3.5 it creates a moment of 47.65 again which is anti-clockwise 15.678 acting at a distance of 1.75 this will create a moment of 15.678 into 1.75 which is 27.44 again this is also clockwise now the net moment at b has to be zero and this column moment is unknown 
so both the beam moments are in the same sense which is anti clockwise so add both this moment and the column moment is going to be opposing the sum of both this moment okay so if we add 47.65 plus 27.44 we get around 75 so there is a column moment of 75 acting on the beam here so once you have 75 column moment we can easily find out what is this horizontal shear at the counter clutcher one for the column number two so this is going to be 75 divided by 1.75 meters which is 75 by 1.75 which is going to be 42.8 this we got the horizontal shear in the second column also so this analysis can be carried out on the each of each and every joint c b and continued so it is important to note that here the force was 120 so if you add all the horizontal forces which is horizontal shears and columns 27.2 42.82 32 and 70 if you add all this together we will get 120 and also when you find out the base here for the bottom one also bottom columns also it is 180 if you add 68 plus 107 plus 181 plus 42.7 if you add all this together we will get 180 plus 120 which is 300 and once we get all the column moments and b moments we can depict that in the diagram bending moment diagram we use the same sun sign convention which is anti clockwise moment on the right and clockwise moment on the left is going to be marked as positive so here we will have a b moment which on the right which is anti clockwise which implies that this is positive here this column moment is on the left of joint b which means that it is on the left of column a joint a we have a anti clockwise um, sorry clockwise moment of 47.65 which means it is again a positive moment so this and this both are positive moments now this can be marked on the your potter frame so on the up side or top side and on the right side i have marking the positive positive bending moments and so you can also do a comparison with the candle portal method the answer will, which we got using portal method the answer will not be the same because as we told initially this is an approximate analysis and the assumption here in both of these are different however the total shape of the diagram is going to be the same going to be similar so that's it for today's lecture in the next lecture we will see the last method of approximate analysis which is factor method thank you